I share the feeling expressed so beautifully by President Kimball, the President uh, Romney at the beginning of this meeting. It is a joy to have President Kimball with us. As members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we place unreserved confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. We accept him as the Son of God and as the Savior of all mankind. We look to him as the way, the truth, and the life. Until the world lives his teachings, we shall continue in our anxiety about the future and the challenges that mortality brings to each of us. The fundamental principle of our religion is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. My message and testimony is this. Only Jesus Christ is uniquely qualified to provide that hope, that confidence, and that strength to overcome the world and rise above our human failings. To do that, we must place our faith in him and live by his laws and teachings. Why faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ was and is the Lord God omnipotent. He was chosen before he was born. He was the all-powerful creator. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came to this earth at a four-appointed time through royal birthright that preserved his godhood combined in his nature were the human attributes of his mortal mother and the divine attributes of the powers of his eternal father. His unique heredity made him heir to the honored title the only begotten Son of God in the flesh. As the Son of God, he inherited powers and intelligence which no human ever had before or since. He was literally Emmanuel, which means God with us. Even though he was God's Son sent to earth, the divine plan of the Father required that Jesus be subjected to all the difficulties and tribulations of mortality. Thus he became subject to temptations, hunger, thirst, and fatigue. To qualify as Redeemer of all our Father's children, Jesus had to be perfectly obedient to all the laws of God. Because he subjected himself to the will of the Father, he grew from grace to grace until he received the fullness of the Father's power. Thus he had all power, both in heaven and on earth. Once this truth about the, the one we worship as the Son of God is understood, we can more readily comprehend how he had power to heal the sick, cure the, all manner of diseases, raise the dead, and command the elements. Even devils whom he cast out were subject to him and acknowledged his divinity. As the great lawgiver, 
He gave laws and commandments for the benefit of all of our Heavenly Father's children. Indeed, His law fulfilled all previous covenants with the house of Israel. Said He, quote, Behold, I am the law and the light. Look unto me and endure to the end, and ye shall live For unto him that endureth to the end will I grant eternal life. His law required all mankind, regardless of station in life, to repent and be baptized in his name and receive the Holy Ghost as the sanctifying power to cleanse themselves from sin. Compliance with these laws and ordinances will enable each individual to stand guiltless before him at the day of judgment. Appropriately, we praise him as the rock of our salvation. To have any measure of appreciation and gratitude for what he accomplished in our behalf we must remember these vital truths. Jesus came to earth to do our Father's will. He came with a foreknowledge that he would bear the burden of the sins of all. He knew that he would be lifted up on the cross. He was born to be the Savior and Redeemer of mankind. He was able to accomplish his mission because he was the Son of God and he possessed the power of God. He was willing to accomplish his mission because he loves us. No mortal being had the power or capability to redeem all other mortals from their lost and fallen condition, nor could any other voluntarily forfeit his life and thereby bring to pass a universal resurrection for all other mortals. Only Jesus Christ was able and willing to accomplish such a redeeming act of love. We may never understand nor comprehend in mortality how he accomplished what he did. But we must not fail to understand why he did what he did. All he did was prompted by his unselfish, infinite love for us. Hear his own words, quote, For behold, I, God, have suffered these things for all, that they might not suffer if they would repent which suffering caused myself, even God, the greatest of all, to tremble because of pain and to bleed at every pore and to suffer both body and spirit and would that I might not drink the bitter cup and shrink." Unquote. As was so characteristic of his entire mortal experience, the Savior submitted to our Father's will and took the bitter cup and drank. He suffered the pains of all men in Gethsemane so they would not have to suffer if they would repent. He submitted himself to humiliation and insults from his enemies without complaint or retaliation. And finally, he endured the flogging and brutal shame of the cross. Only then did he voluntarily submit to death. He is the resurrection and the life. This power to revive his own life 
was possible because Jesus Christ was God, even the Son of God, because he had the power to overcome death, all mankind will be resurrected. Because I live, he said, ye shall live also. How we reverent his name. Yes, even the hallowed titles that represent his deeds. He is our great exemplar. Because of his love for us, he showed us how to rise above petty weaknesses and to demonstrate affection, love, and charity in our relationships with others. He is the bread of life. By fasting, prayer, and service to others, he showed that man shall not live by bread alone, but must be nourished by the word of God. He was in all points tempted, as we are yet without sin. And so he is able to help them that are tempted. He is the Prince of Peace, the ultimate comforter. As such, he has power to comfort an anguish heart, pierced by sorrow or sin. He provides a special kind of peace that no human agency can provide. He said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid." Unquote. He is the Good Shepherd. He possesses all the attributes of the divine nature of God. He is virtuous, patient, kind, long-suffering, gentle, meek, and charitable. If we are weak or deficient in any of these abilities, he stands willing to strengthen and compensate. He is a wonderful counselor. Indeed, there is no human condition be it suffering, incapacity, inadequacy, mental deficiency, or sin, which he cannot comprehend or to which his love will not reach out to the individual. He pleads today, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He is our advocate, mediator, and judge. Because he is God, he is perfectly equitable with justice and mercy. He can simultaneously plead our cause and judge our destiny. Faith in him is more than mere acknowledgement that he lives. It is more than professing belief. Because he descended below all things, he knows how to help us rise above our daily difficulties. Faith in him means believing that even though we do not understand all things, he does. We therefore must look to him in every moment Doubt not, fear not. Faith in him means trusting that he was that he has all power over all men and all nations. There is no evil which he cannot arrest. All things are in his hands. The earth is his, his rightful dominion. Yet he permits evil so we can make choices between good and evil. His gospel is the perfect prescription for all human problems and social ills. But his gospel is only effective as it is applied in our lives. Therefore, we must 
Feast upon the words of Christ. For behold, the words of Christ will tell you all the things that ye should do. Unless we do his teachings, we do not demonstrate faith in him. Think what a different world this would be if all mankind would do as he said, quote, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. What then is the answer to the question? What is to be done concerning the problems and dilemmas that individuals, communities, and nations face today? Here is his simple prescription. Believe in God. Believe that he is and that he created all things both in heaven and in earth. Believe that he has all wisdom and all power, both in heaven and in earth. Believe that man doth not comprehend all things which the Lord can comprehend. Believe that ye must repent of your sins and forsake them, and humble yourselves before God, and ask in the sincerity of your heart that he would forgive you. And now, if you believe all these things, see that ye do them." Unquote. As members of the church, we are under obligation to make this sinless son of man our ideal the one perfect being who ever walked the earth. Sublimest example of nobility, godlike in nature, perfect in his love, our Redeemer, our Savior, the Immaculate Son of our Eternal Father, the light, the life, the way. With all my soul, I love him. I humbly testify that he is the same loving, compassionate Lord today as when he walked the dusty roads of Palestine. He is close to his servants on this earth. He cares about and loves each of us today. Of that, you can be assured. He lives today as our Lord, our Master, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our God. God bless us all to believe in him, to accept him, to worship him, to fully trust in him, and follow him it is my humble prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.